We've used classes in every single video, but we haven't talked about the actual class itself. I want to first say that I've been getting a lot of comments asking me how to think like a programmer. So what I did to help you out here is I put together a little guide. It's called seven tips on how to think like a programmer. It's got lots of good information in it here. It contains a method to how to understand code, even if you don't have any prior experience. It's got tips on what the best programmers in the world think. So if you want this, seven tips on how to think like a programmer, then just click the link in the description. And if you're new here, my name's Alex. I post a Java tutorial on this channel every single week for you to understand Java and help you out with your classes. So if you might be interested in that, then please consider subscribing. So let's just start it off by going to file new Java project. We'll call it our, our project. Hit finish and then open that up on the source folder, go to new class. This creates the class we want. And I'm gonna call it class one and hit finish. This generates some keywords to start letting us make a class. A class is a blueprint for an object and objects let you do things. In Java, you make a database object to get information from a database, update information in a database. Facebook has an account object that has username, date of birth, gender. Objects and computers let you do things with them and a class lets you make objects. So without classes, there wouldn't be objects. So let's start building our class. Literally all that's in a class is things it knows and things it can do, AKA variables and methods. Let's start with variables. Let's give class one an integer variable called X, say it's equal to two. Now this class knows the variable two. And to test this out, what we can do is make another class with a main method. Because to run code, you gotta have a main method somewhere. And we don't wanna clutter this one right now, so we'll just make a new one. We'll go to new class. This one will be called main. And click the public static void main. This adds this, which runs code when we click the green run button in here. So what we can do to test what class one knows is make the object from it. So to make an object from a class, you type the name, name it something, and say equals new that name with parentheses. The parentheses makes it a constructor, which means it makes the object. Now, if we print out C dot, now we see X, C dot X. Whenever you put object dot something, it shows you all the things it knows and things it can do. Variables up here, methods down here. So it knows X, so if we save and run it, and then we print c.x, which is two. You can have all types of variables in here. So you could have, say, an array of character variables if you wanted, and use it just the same. c.chars. Beautiful. So just with these two lines of code, we've created a class that can now create objects and use what it knows and what it can do. Let's delete this chars because it's kind of getting messy over here. Change that back. You can make multiple objects of the same class too. So we could say class one, name it something else. And now we've got two objects from the same class. And now D knows X too. So if we ran this, we'd get two, two. We create an object C from the class one blueprint. We create an object D from the class one blueprint. And then we print C's X and D's X. So this one class can make multiple objects from it. And that's the real difference between classes and objects. Objects are made from the classes. So now that we've shown what the class knows, let's do something that the class can do with a method. We'll make a simple print method. It won't return anything, so we're gonna type void here. Print hi, and then we'll just print out hi. Now, class one knows print hi, so if we did c dot, we can do print hi now. Let's delete this. c dot print hi. You can also do d dot print hi but let's just do one. Now we print high from the C object from the class one class that way. You can also have multiple classes 
So let's make another one. We'll call it class two. No main method, because we already got one. Say class two has integer y equals three. Now we can do class two c equals new class two. Print out c dot y. This will print out what y is, which is three. This is really the basics of classes and everything else, all the other keywords you see, the weird logic and stuff, that's all extra. So if you see like public static boolean is valid with weird parameters like this, this is just a method with keywords. If you see things like public final int z, equals that. Like these are all keywords and you learn what the keywords are. Public means it has access to other files. Final means it doesn't change and type integer, but it all boils down to the basics. Variables and methods inside of a class that objects know when you make an object with the class. So that's really the basics. I don't wanna go further into this because that's really the concept here. A class can make multiple objects that will all know the same variables and methods. There are concepts of superclasses and subclasses using object-oriented programming terms, but just really understand what the class is. First, super simple, super basic variables and methods. Hope this was helpful. Remember to get my seven tips on how to think like a programmer. I really think that'll help you out. Trust me, I've been through the same thing in my computer science degree, so I know what you're going through. Uh, click the link in the description if you want it. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.